Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all you new subscribers. Thanks for stopping in and joining us here for some good old outboard fun. <sighs> that was a mouthful. Um, yeah, so, um, boy, the weather just went to <laughs> raining and blowing and nasty. Fitner man or beast. Pretty nasty day out today. This weather blew in here yesterday, and this is right out to the right. Uh, behind the house. The Pacific Ocean. Little bit on the froggy side. But, you know, I normally post like a midweek video, and I didn't do that. I want to apologize for that, and there's a reason. Um, did you notice my new wardrobe? A couple of you subscribers got on to me and said, uh, Cody Bass, um, <laughs> it's time to retire that pair of coveralls. Well, see, in addition to being a geezer, I'm also a short squatty body. And I can't go down to my local hanky hardware here or even my local Walmart and buy coveralls in my size. And down at our local ship supply hardware that, do you know what they get for a set of Dickies coveralls? And uh, in 48 to 50 regular. Now, Therein lies the problem. You see, I take a 49.50 short, or a 48.50 short, and I've never seen them for sale in the 40 years I've lived here, in short. So, get on that inner screen and get them. Nope, I could not find them anywhere on there. This is a particular brand that I like. I think they're called Red Cap. And they, I like them in the 50 short red cap. They just seem to be way more comfortable. And uh, so I had to go to the big city. Good morning, everybody. I just got out here in my truck and I'm fixing to start it up. And if you wonder why I'm sitting out here in the dark, because um, it's about. 4.45 ish a.m. in the morning. So, you're like, why are you sitting out in your truck at 4.45 in the morning? Well, I'm going up to the big city. The big city of Anchorage, Alaska. So, I'm on my way to catch an aeroplane to fly couple hundred miles across the big specific ocean pond get in that aeroplane and go to the big city I got a medical appointment over there I'm gonna do some shopping I'm gonna take one of my little mini cameras if I have the time to film anything or whatnot but anyway I'm off to the big city I'll see you later well you might be able to tell that uh, I'm not on a little island 
at this time. I had to come over to the big city to, uh, well, the VA sent me over here for a medical appointment. And, uh, so I'm going to be riding around the giant city metropolis of Anchorage, Alaska. And I'm in a, a hybrid EV rental car. Never seen anything like it. Never seen anything like it. This car. <laughs> well. It, it kind of does what it decides it wants to do. Um, but I'll flip the camera around here a little bit. I'm kind of leaving the downtown area right now. Heading out to a couple other places, some stores and stuff where I wanted to pick up some stuff. So, it's a beautiful day over here though. Well, anyway, um, so before we get started back on uh, this outboard that we've been, uh, that I just started, I think, last video, um, I've had a couple of inquiries. People asking me how can they uh, send something to me or how can they get my... Um, email address and so forth and when it comes to computers and computing I'm about as dumb as they get um, so here's what I know um, if you just go to YouTube and on their search bar on YouTube search bar type in Cody Bass, that'll bring you to my home page. Once you get there, you scroll down just a little bit, a couple inches, and you'll see stuff going across the top of it. It'll say community, um, I forget what else, but those words going there, I know community's there, and about is there. Click on about. When you click on about, you scroll down and on the left hand side of the screen you'll see my business address my email and that information there now that being said 
I've been told that if you're doing this on a smartphone or something like that, that does not work. So you have to do it on a pewter. Pewter, so I'm told. Um, and I don't own a smartphone. Or as I call them, stupefones. I don't have one. So I don't know how that works. Oh well, that's the best I can do you. Um, but that will work if you're doing it on a laptop or computer or whatnot. Cody Bass, about, scroll down left hand side. So I hope that helps you out a bit. Um, we are going to get back on this 20 horse. That's the spirit. A 20 horse spirit arc arc tick an arc tick um uh, supposedly had a couple people say yep yeah, that's how these things came about is that they suzuki rebadged them for arctic cat and they tried to sell them for couple years two three I don't know I honestly don't know how how long this is the only one I've ever seen um, and even on YouTube where there are some there's not a 20 horsepower I have the only one I have the only one um, yeah I've never seen another one but it's definitely it's funny I was looking at this thing and it's definitely got a Suzuki shifter on it. Well, I guess I could I could take that back. Maybe it don't. Maybe it has a Nissan. Nissan? Nissan? Something son. But anyway, I guess it could be a Nissan. Let me spin you around. Let me spin you around. I show you. I show you. See that? See that blue? Try not to shake you too much. The shifter. The shifter. Matches my glove. Um. The Suzuki ones, and I guess the Nissan ones, look just like that. But I do believe somebody has affixed it. A Johnson, that, that's definitely Evan Rude right there. You see that? that? So this thing has a Johnson shift handle, an Evan Rude hook. I'm going to replace that one with a brass one. And you say, why? And I say, because I have one. Yeah, I have a brass. These used to be brass, and I have one. Um... Yeah, that's Evinrude blue, that's Johnson white, and that's Nissan. Sorry about that, but my battery died. So, yeah, so we got a, a Nissan, 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 Nissan. Shift handle, an Evinrude latch, and a Johnson latch handle, and then if you look right up in here, you can see some some plumbing parts brass plumbing parts so but the cool thing is i get you up there the cool thing is i went out in the old bone pile and i found this off of suzuki and i don't know if you can notice it but it even said, you can, you can tell that said Suzuki with an I right there. Or maybe Suzuki, I don't know. But um, it's even got the little, I still got two of the three screws. What the heck is that? Um, I got two of the three screws, and if I can get it out of here, I've got this. 
So I took this and lined it up, the gaskets and all, on there, and they're the same. So I got a an air box to put on it now. So that was good. One last thing. You understand. So let's get back to it. Let me uh Try that impeller up and I'll show you. It's kind of different looking, a little bit different. But this thing wasn't there. When I pulled that whole water pump housing up, it lifted up. That's what it was. Yeah, okay. But up we go. And let me get the key. Wow, look at the size of that. I'll show you. I'll show you. Let me get... I'll show you. I'll show you. Look at the size of that key. You see that? And that's what I found about these older DT Suzuki's, of which I believe Spirit is. Look at the size of that key and the thickness of this key. Whereas on a typical OMC or whatnot, you might see a little pin. Look at the thickness on that and the girth and everything. That's an impeller key. That's an impeller key. And then the impeller's kind of different. You see the impellers, it looks like a normal impeller, but where the key goes, look at the rubber right there. Real thick. <laughs> and uh, I can't tell if that's metal in there or not. I'd have to clean it up yet, but a little bit memory set, but you know, that impeller was doing its thing. It, it doesn't look all brittle or bad. It does look worn on the contact surface is pretty bad but you know it was working it's not spun or anything and like I said you can see this lug here er, er, er. pretty neat that's the spirit <laughs> yeah okay so the lower came apart nice and uh I don't have a bunch of spirit water pumps and impellers out there. So I'm going to have to order one of them up, you understand. So, so, but this, the oil or whatever's in the lower unit will certainly have to come out of there. Um, boy, this thing shifts nice. I mean, it's just, look at that. I mean, it's nice. Um, not not overly salty some salt in there and such but not super bad I've seen a lot worse so I'm gonna and remember this is more than a you know get the outboard running you know video I want to paint things up clean these up um, because it's not every day I get one of these spirits and this will be a, a fun display motor and You understand I'm a geezer. Yes, I'm an old geezer. And I don't like lifting heavy outboards. And this thing really don't weigh a lot for 20 horsepower. Um, so I think it'll be a real good motor if I need to swap something off of my, you know, DT40 Suzuki or my Merc. And I, I, but I still want to go fishing, you understand. Oh, and that's some other things I'm going to address right now, right here, right now. People are asking me, when are you going to make a fishing video? You do understand it's March in Alaska. But you're right. It's getting close. It's getting that, that close. And I'm going to go fishing. So them fishing videos are coming soon. They are. Because that weather's been getting nice. We ain't got no snow. I got lots of fishing tackle and lots of fishing pole. So here soon, a fishing we will. Go. Show enough. But yeah, this is, I wanna, so this is gotta get washed. You know, it's gotta get cleaned up. Got the ooky all over it. 
oil drained out of there, see what kind of shape the seal's in, which I, th I think they're going to be fine. And so far, I, I honestly was thinking he, he, this lower unit would come apart a lot harder. It was no problem. Um, and that's, that's good. Maybe, maybe it's not as abused as it looks. But we've got this tiller uh, situation that we've got to address. And, I, you know, it's got the cables in it. The... They're kind of like not the good thick, you know, 40 horsepower, 55 commercial cables. It's got the bicycle cables. And I don't like them things, and they're charging just way too much for them. Now, I don't know even if I can get them for a Spirit Outboard, but I'm hoping that a Suzuki 20. But, you know, I'll look at the price of them, but I know what it's going to be already. For a set of them cables, there's two of them. Pull from one side of the concentric wheel from the top to the bottom. That's how it's set up, two cables. If they have them for an 80-something Suzuki 20, um, my guess is it'll be a, probably about, if not slightly over 100 bucks. We ain't gonna do that. We ain't gonna do that. But at the same time, they're, they're, keep it original, keep it original, keep it original. I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, I was thinking this would be a good kind of date. You know, my, God bless you, 18, it's right there. Somewhere, right there, my Tahatsu. God bless you. That has one of the neatest throttle systems I've ever come across in one of these outboards. I really like it. So before I go messing with these cables and such, I'm going to take another look at that Tahatsu. God bless you, and see if it might work on this. Because I really do like that system on that 18. Um, well, real quick. You can see, here's, here, oh no, you can't see. <laughs> um, let me get you closer to it so you can see. Hopefully you can see. i zoom you in. i zoom you in. All right. Here's these little cables I'm talking about. They're just wire, you know, it's just braided wire. One on top, one on bottom, concentric wheel, goes through a sleeve, and then we'll look at the inside. Same thing, I, I really hate that, that system. I don't like it. I don't like it, boy, golly. So, let's move the, the top. Let me lower it just a bit. Okay. All right, boy, it is a convoluted deal, but it's still just a conception, concentric, whatever the heck they call it, a wheel, you know. See, here's these cables. I think they're unhooked, actually. Never, never fond of it. And, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe there's no reason Where's that one coming from? I can't even see it. Um, to unhook them. Just hook them back. I mean, they were unhooked when I got it. It stuck down there. I can't get there. They're, you know, they're not in bad shape. And they got a lot of brass. But now, what was supposed to hold that on there like that? Or is it just a, no? I thought maybe there was a clamp affair. But you see, it, it wouldn't be hard with this piece here. It wouldn't be hard to rig, you know, some kind of, even a single thick cable could work off of that. And I'm thinking this was probably for if you had this hooked up to remote anyway. That's, that's probably what that's for. So I've got options, by golly. But here are the original cables, and yeah, they do work. See that? Look like a boxer. Give my left hook, the right hook, left hook, the right hook. 
but they're not in bad shape. They just, but I mean, that has to stay on there somehow. Maybe it's just the length or, I don't know, I have to look at it closer. What do you think? I do like the brass. I'm a, I'm, I'm a sucker for brass in outboards. And Suzuki is, is good about using it. So I do like to see this, see what I mean? On the carbody reader. Just like the old OMCs. Brass. That shows class, brass. Now, I found some more bronze brass, whatever it is, but something told me this is Bubba and not Suzuki. <laughs> Look at those fuel fittings. Can you see that? I think that's more Bubba than uh, Mincy Moto or whoever made these. Look at look at that. That looks like plumbing fittings to me. Yeah, that, that looks like he was trying to run a sink, not an outboard. But uh, hey, at least he went with brass, bronze, brass, whatever it is. Yeah. So I'll be back. I'm telling you, working on this engine so far is like, uh, you know, a time warp. Um, that's the gear oil coming out of there. You can see it coming out of the hole right here. Got the top screw out, and look at that. There was no water in this at all. When was the last time you saw green, old-school Quaker State-looking gear oil? Yeah, I mean, literally there was no water in it. And and the oil, it, it does not have that old crude oil smell to it. Um, it's literally like going back in time. Yeah, look at that. It's green, old school Quaker State gear oil. I actually have some of that around here. Here's what I'm talking about. This old Quaker state. Look, look at what comes out of this spigot. See that green oil? <laughs> the old green Quaker state. Um, yeah, this is an old bottle that I, I've had. Now this is the outboard motor oil, but their gear oil, it, it came in the same thing like this. And the... Uh, uh, it came in the tubes. I, I have some of the old tubes around here, too, but uh, I only use it. I, I use this. See that nice brass spigot on there? Did I mention I love the brass? Um, I use this like on my vice, but anymore I've got so much used gear oil and stuff I use. Use used gear oil, but uh, that's the old school Quaker State, and that's what that stuff looks like. So that lets me know that that oil has been in there a generation or two. So, yeah. 
Yipper. Well, I thought I'd show you my little uh, lower unit pressure tester thingy majib. Um, I made this one years ago. I don't know what I took the gauge off of. It only goes to 100 PSI. It might have been one of those little small, like, buy at Walmart, almost disposable compressors. Could have been that, but all it is is a brass T, and then you screw. I screwed the gauge in, then I screwed some hose and clamps, and if you look on this end, this is the end that goes to the lower unit. Um, this was an aluminum bolt that I used. Those are available down at your Hanky Hardware store. And then I put a big fat squishy rubber O-ring. And then I put a regular plasticky nylon outboard seal. Okay. And on this end, that's one of those tire stems like you'd cut off a truck or something. They're brass generally. Any kind of dually will have them on the back. And I just cut one off and clamped it with some hose. And it's got a Schrader valve. That's how you release and put the air into it. So that's that. You can pause it if you want to build something like that. Okay. Because some before, you know, I used to use this before I got this guy here. But uh, all I did here was take an old air chuck thing and put a couple hose clamps on a hose. And this, this gun here is both a vacuum gun and a pressure gun so I got it, it it that way would be vacuum that way would be pressure so um, I don't go by this gauge I go by this gauge because it's gonna be the one that's screwed into it and I'll show you that so here's our lower get you in there get you in there I think you are. I'll turn this to I'll turn it. Oh. So you can at least see the I'm going through the fill hole. It doesn't matter which one you go through. You understand? Oops. Help if I put the right end in there, huh? So we put this in there. And then just snug it. Snug should be good enough. Don't go reefing down. You're just making a seal. Ba -ba -ba -ba. All right, I'm gonna move you over here just a tad. Hopefully, you're still in there. All right, there, there, there. there. Okay, okay. Then you take your little Schrader valve here. And I'm going to put 10, 12 pounds on it. Oh yeah, you can see it's on zero. You can see that valve's on zero. And this is the one we're going to go by. Because it's the one that's going to hold the pressure for me while I let it set. Well, I don't know if I can... Get this thing to try. Hey, maybe that'll work. Nope, our sleeve's in the way. Let me come over here on this side. Oh, she goes to about, I'd say we'll go about 12, I'd say. So we'll pump it up. And the way I'm going to let that pressure off there is that little Schrader valve, just like a letting air out of a tire. I'm just going to push it and the needle will go to zero. But we're going to let that stay there for a little bit. I got it on about 10, 11, 12, 13 PSI. And uh, then you want to take some kind of soapy water. Lock them so, lock them so. See if you see any bubbles. Spray it around your prop shaft seals. Spray it around your 
drain, your screw, your overfill, screw being the shift cradle, and then up top here. And I can tell it's holding, and I'm sure it'll hold just fine. Um, hopefully you can see that she's holding at about 13 pounds and I'll let that set there you know some folks say overnight and all this no if you spray soapy, yucky water, and well, not yucky, but soapy dishwater all over that thing, full of soap, and you ain't getting no bubbles, then you can think of it as a tire on a rim. It's either leaking or it ain't. Um, let that sit there for 20 minutes, and if it holds and don't move at all, you've got a good lower unit. So it... Uh, I'm going to uh, so we uh, we got a pressure test done on the lower unit we got that uh, old school lower unit oil drained out of there and I think now it's time to do a little uh, cosmetics um, I'm waiting still it ought to be here tomorrow for the impeller for this guy and in the meantime I thought I'd do a little bit of uh, washing sanding priming and painting and get it all purdied up and ready to go back on the spirit that's the spirit so um, if you look over that shoulder it's done got dark outside the day's been a little long it's getting a little bit late and this video starting to go a little bit long so I think that'll be a wrap on this one and uh, as always somewhere in there there's probably a hack from Kodiak thanks for watching more vids are coming on inside outboards with your host Cody Bass.